Hello, everybody. I don't know. You guys didn't expect when I would be coming on today, but I'm doing the giveaway, the live giveaway. And I think I have the bag of goodies right over here. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for entering the giveaway. So um, as soon as a few people join in and make sure that the sound is good. Uh, hi, Denise. Hello. Welcome. Happy Wednesday, even though it is September the 11th. So not exactly the happiest day, but, you know, we got to make the best of today. Right. So hi, Eva. Hi, DJ. Hello. OK, Olympia. Hello. So let's see if Theo wants to make an appearance. Yeah, Theo. Everybody likes to see Theo. Say hello, Theo. So the, we have big news though. So speaking of Theo, say hi, Theo. We're getting a puppy. Yay, we're so excited. So we have two cats. Theo makes an appearance sometimes and Minnie does not. <laughs> but we have been wanting a dog for a very, very long time. And I had a dog growing up and Tom had dogs growing up, but we, with our life, we figured we were so busy that um, cats would be better for our life. So we've had cats for the last um, 18 years or so. And um, Patrick, our son, desperately, desperately wants a dog. And he has been working on Tom for the last year to get a dog. So hi everybody, hello, hello. So we, um, Tom has been working, or Patrick has been working on Tom for us to get a dog for a very long time. And it, it's just time. So the other day, Saturday morning, and I'll get to the live giveaway in just a moment. I want to make sure that we have a good number of people here because I didn't really tell you guys I was coming on at any particular time. So I just kind of surprised you. Anyway, so Tom and Patrick went out on um, Saturday morning. <laughs> to get a haircut <laughs> and, and Mara and I were on our way to another appointment and Patrick texts me like, dad just put down money on a puppy. And we're like, what? <laughs> so, um, so Patrick sent photos to us. Let's see if I can show you a photo. So Patrick sent photos to us of a little puppy he chose. It is a, um, it is a puwawa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a poodle chihuahua mix. Make sure there's nothing confidential on there. It's a poodle chihuahua mix. And he's only like two weeks old. And so we have to wait until, see if I can get it without the glare. We have to wait until about the middle to late October to get to pick him up. So we're very excited that we have a new addition coming soon to our family. So we have not had a dog in years. So um, he's a po poodle chihuahua mix. So he's only going to be teeny tiny. And so hopefully he gets along with our cats. I think he'll get along great with Theo because Theo is pretty laid back. Um, and but Minnie, it's going to rock her world. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, Minnie, you're just going to have to adjust. So let's see. Oh, yeah, I wish you could put photos in chat so I could see all your pets too. Anyway, so Puwawa, <laughs> Poodle Chihuahua, or we could call it a Poochie or a Choodle, <laughs> but I kind of like Puwawa. <laughs> so anyway, so that's our exciting news. So we have, I have a couple little quick announcements and then we'll get right to the giveaway. It's finally fall here in Ohio. Yay. So a little bit cooler, which is so nice. Let's see. Oh, I started a Patreon page. So I will put the link in the description below, but basically uh, all the work that I do on YouTube is because I feel like doing it. It's completely free. So all of my time. So if you ever feel like um, throwing five bucks my way or more, then you can, you can go to my Patreon page and I'll put the link below and you can either give a one-time gift if you feel so inclined or you can sign up for a, a bigger gift that comes with a prize. And some of the prizes include like um, a 15 minute FaceTime with me and we can talk about, you know, whatever projects you want to talk about. There's um, 
phone consultations with me that you can purchase on Patreon for um, crochet career advice. So you know that I do the crochet coaching. And so this is an easy way to um, buy one of those time slots from me without making a commitment to an entire month or um, or whatever. Now, if you are in a position where you want to hire me like for a month to be your consultant for career coaching, I do have a few clients who do that. You can check out my website, um, ellengormley.com under the coaching tab. It might also be under shop, but make sure you email me about that first, because I don't want you to take on a month of coaching unless um, we make sure that you're in the right place to really take advantage of that month of of um, consulting. So anyway, my email, if you need me, is ellen.gocrochet at gmail.com. So the website, Patreon, email me if you have questions about coaching and want to know if it's for you. And um, so check it out. So that's those are options. Now, France, don't forget, we've got France. People are signing up. It's so exciting to go next April. The, I think it's the 19th through the 27th. It's definitely the 19th. I don't remember the end date, but that's um, our trip to France where we're going to go see artistic sites. And I'm going to teach at least two crochet classes. I have a video coming up where Chicky and I will talk, Mara and I will talk about um, the sites where we're going to go in France and see, and I do have a sneak peek of the one of the projects that I'm going to teach on the trip. There will be two classes on the trip, and in addition to the crochet classes, I'll be around all the time. So now when we went to Ireland, we did a lot of fun crocheting like on the buses to and from um, activities or to and from sightseeing trips. So we will be sitting and crocheting as much as you want to. You can also knit. And I had some people do needlepoint and embroidery last time on the Ireland trip. So whatever creative thing you'd like to do, um, that's, that'll be, that'll be great. Whatever you can bring on the bus. <laughs> so, um, that'll be a lot of fun. So I don't know what the second class topic is just now off the top of my head, but it's going to be fun. And then if you bring like a guest, um, like a spouse or a child, um, an older child, like a high school age child, um, and they don't want to take the crochet classes, that's fine. They can do sightseeing or hang out in the room or take a nap or go to the spa or whatever while we do the two classes that are included in the trip. So last time, Tom and Patrick, they went sightseeing while I taught the crochet class. So um, actually, I didn't teach actually last time. Last time, um, Jennifer Ryan taught and I was there as the um editor of the magazine sponsoring the trip. So, but I was still around, like people asked me questions and stuff and it was, it was a lot of fun. Okay. Okay. So I hope chihuahuas are good. I hope chihuahuas are a great breed. Now he's mixed with a poodle. So hopefully he won't be too high strung. Hopefully he likes to sit and cuddle. <laughs> That's what we need. We need a cuddly, a cuddly puppy. So we're going to hopefully teach him to cuddle from the very beginning. So hello, everybody. Okay, so the France trip, I know it's expensive, but if you start now and make payments, you can do that. So check out the website and I'll put the link below um, so that you can find it and you can read all the terms and conditions where you can make a payment plan if you want. But there's also a discount if you like pay in advance by a certain date. So, um, you know, priorities, right? I mean, you gotta eat though, I understand. And medical stuff, I get it. So like, if you can't make it, I completely understand. But if you can, that would be so fun. So please consider it. Okay, so on our giveaway. Okay, so a chihuahua. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a chihuahua poodle. So I'm calling it a puwawa. <laughs> so I know that's a little goofy. Okay, out of your two chihuahuas, one is very cuddly and shy, and she barely ever barks. As long as you start early, you should be good. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. I have not had a pet since I was like before college. I guess my, I, I think my dog died when I was in a freshman year of college and I was away already. So like, I have not had a pet since I was a puppy myself. Okay, so the giveaway. So thank you so much for entering the giveaway. Remember that my giveaways are always subscribe to the channel and then leave a comment on the giveaway videos. And then I randomly pull from all of the comments on the video, 
the winner. And so the winner today received a whole bunch of great yarns. There's a whole big prize pack of yarns here for the winner. All of this yarn goes to the winner. Drum roll, please. Let's see. Uh, Linda, Linda Kinzer, K-I-N-Z-E-R. Linda Kinzer, if you're in the chat, please raise your hand and say bingo because you are the winner of the giveaway. Send me an email at ellen.gocrochet at gmail.com. Send me a U.S. mailing address. Um, I will mail out the prize. And Linda, if you do not have a U.S. mailing address, then um, let me know and I will send you a digital prize to your email so that um, so that you will win something. But I'm assuming, um, I'm hoping most people in the group have a U.S. mailing address or, or a way to, to access that. And so Linda Kinzer, I ought to spell your name in chat so that you can see it, Linda Kinzer with a Z. And she is our giveaway winner this week, yay! So congratulations, Linda. I will add Linda's name to the comments of this video so that she knows. And also I'll go into her actual comment under the giveaway video and reply to her telling her that she's the winner. Yay! Okay, so since we got the business taken care of, let me read through a little bit of the comments and you guys can just fire away if you want. I probably have another 15 minutes or so that I can spend with you. I'm excited to get to chat with you. It's been a very, very busy couple of weeks for me. So yes, congratulations to Linda. Yay! Okay, so I'm gonna scroll up and see what video, what comments I missed. Okay. Wow, your Chihuahua Eva lived for 18 years. Wow. Oh, wow. I didn't realize that little dogs lived quite that long, but it's okay. It's a commitment. You know, we're making a commitment to our forever friend, so we get it. Let's see. Although I know Patrick's going to want to take him to college with him. So we're like, well, why don't you just stay here and mooch off your parents for the first couple of years and we'll keep the pet. And then when you're ready and established, then we'll talk about it. I have a feeling, though, that Tom is going to be too attached to the puppy to let it go. So after trying to convince him all this time to, oh, and by the way, the 44 of you in the chat right now, please drop a like on this video if you don't mind. I really appreciate it. So, so even though it took us like a year to like convince Tom that we should get um, a pet, I think what finally put it over the edge was Theo. He loves Theo. And Theo fetches like a dog and he plays with Tom in the evenings. And I think Tom was like, oh, we had another one of these, <laughs> a playful pet. And it made Patrick happy at the same time. Maybe that would be good. So because Minnie doesn't, she interacts with me. She lets me pet her and she interacts with Mara a little bit, but she's really, really shy. And so she doesn't really let us pet her much. And so um Oh, Sharon, Sharon is saying thanks for the Bruges Lace book. You enjoy the crochet, the tape's so pretty. Good, yes, absolutely. And there's actually a table runner pattern um, in the Annie's online class, Learn to Crochet Lace, which includes Bruges Lace, Broomstick, and Hairpin. And one of the six patterns for that class, included in that class price, is a Bruges table runner, which I actually wear as a scarf sometimes. Just saying. So, um, yeah, so Bruce Lace is a lot of fun, and I do want to do more videos for you on that. So we finally convinced Tom to get a cat or to get a dog. And um, on the way home from choosing the Puwawa, um, who we think we have a name for him yet, but we don't want to name him quite yet until we see him and make sure that he has the personality that matches the name. Um Tom said, I said, where, where are we going to keep the puppy at night? Like, I know some people keep their dogs crated and a lot of dogs seem to really like that and feel secure with that. And like, you know, it would be nice for him to be able to sleep without being bothered by the cat. So like, maybe he'd really love being crated. Like, if we give that a try, where is he going to sleep? And Tom said he was going to build a little um, dog house. 
for the dog for his wood shop, like in the basement. So in part of our basement, like part of it is finished and there's like a sofa and like um, TV. And then there's the unfinished part, which I mean, it's, it's finished, but it's like a wood shop. So like it's painted concrete floor and Tom's table saws and all that stuff. Anyway, so Tom's like, I'll put a, I'll make him a dog house for the wood shop. And I thought that is so funny because he, um, he clearly wants to have this dog like nearby him, which I thought was really funny. So I think he's excited, which is really good to get him on board. Let's see. Let's see. Dogs and cats are both fun in their own ways. Absolutely. Okay. What is crochet tapes? So um, Bruges Lace is a crochet, uh, well, long story, it's actual lace from like Belgium and stuff, but we, I have a crochet take on it that I did not invent, but I saw in like Russian magazines. And I actually learned from designer Susan Lohman at a crochet Guild of America conference years ago. And it's a way of making these long, thin, if you can imagine like a scarf almost, a really long, thin scarf. It's really like literally only an inch wide ish. And then you can make curves and stuff that wrap around and look very serpentine and you can make it connect to each other. So it's like a gazillion little short rows that are only four or five stitches wide. So because it's a very narrow piece, we call it a tape or a ribbon. And so you can add curves and stuff so that you can make it very um, spontaneous and you can create fabrics by um, creating really, really long serpentine tapes and having it attached to itself in various various spots. You can also make um, Bruges motifs. So um, I probably am going to film a couple videos this afternoon if I get a chance. And one of them, I might make a Bruges circle. And then I actually have a pattern that was in, um, I assume it was in Crochet Magazine. No, it was in my book. It was in um, Learn Bruges Lace. Uh, my book with Annie's and that blanket. I can't even remember the name of it now. I forget the name of it. Anyway, it's it's like a tan color and it's these square Bruges motifs that are then attached to one another. And then they took after my after my book. It's been a while <laughs> since that's been out of print. And then I mean, I still have copies, though, if you want to check out my website under the shop tab. So ellengormley.com and then click on the shop tab. I have copies of Learn Bruges Lace available here at home that I can sign and mail to you in the United States. So anyway, Crochet Magazine then, after I left the magazine, took my pattern from my book and republished it in something and another magazine and some sort of compilation. I don't know. So it is out there again somewhere. I don't know where they put it. I forget. I think it was in one of their SIPs, their SIPs, a special edition. Um, so, or a special issue. So I'm not sure where it is. And oh I gosh, I think, is it a dune throw? D-U-N-E, dune throw, I think is what it's called because it's kind of a sandy taupe color. I think that's what the, the project is called. Anyway, I digress. So Bruges lace is a way of making narrow crochet tapes and then like attaching it to itself and or making it into motifs and attaching the motifs to one another. But it all starts with the premise of uh, long, skinny, tons of rows, but only five stitches, four or five stitches wide pieces. So it's very interesting. Let's see. Um, you have to go, Sharon. Thanks for stopping by. Have I ever crocheted or knitted with ribbon yarn or 100% polyester yarn? Any ideas what to make with them? Absolutely. Um, it totally depends on what the yarn looks like, though. So if it's a ribbon yarn, like how fat is the ribbon? Is it made out of rayon? If it's made out of like slippery material, then it probably needs to be something slinky like a poncho or something that drapes. 100% um, polyester yarn. You mean like? I'm sure I have. Um, it, it just depends on what the yarn physically looks like. So, and whatever the care is. So if it's something that needs hand wash, then that changes what you might choose to make out of it. Polyester is often in socks and like t-shirt material. 
So, um, you know, you just, it depends on how fat the yarn is, whether it's, um, a flat ribbon type yarn, or if it's a, um, tube or if it's a spun kind of yarn. So I don't know. It depends on what it looks like. I don't love ribbon yarn as a rule. If it's like, like literally a ribbon, if it's like silky and flat and maybe half an inch wide, it just gets twisted and tangled when you loop it through and knot it through with the crochet. Um, and it just, I just think it looks kind of blobby. You, you just can't see the stitch definition very well for a very intricate stitch pattern, which is fine if that's what you want. But if you are excited about the stitch pattern, then it's not going to show up in a ribbon yarn. Um, very narrow ribbon though, um, that's like just a yarn that happens to be flat that you can still see a lot of the definition if it's a solid color. So that one, if it's a ribbon that's like maybe an eighth of an inch wide, that changes everything. That's very different than, than a ribbon that's a half an inch wide. So you can do different things depending on the width and, of the ribbon and how thick it is. Let's see. Bruges lace. Bruges lace is so easy. It's very easy. So it's just like double crochets and chains generally. So you can do it. So absolutely give it a try. Let's see. Yes, congratulations again to Linda Kinzer, K-I-N-Z-E-R. So last time I talked to you on a live post, I had um, three more book projects that, that had come my way. So I had turned in 12 and the editor decided that we didn't have enough content for the pages that were allotted. So she asked me to come up with three more projects which I hurried up and did. <laughs> so I just mailed those off. I overnighted them last Thursday and I need to finish writing the patterns because I've been busy and she's been asking for those. So I need to, I, the patterns are mostly done but I need to go through and make sure that they're complete because when I'm designing, I tend to just take notes and I'll take either handwritten notes or I'll go ahead and start the pattern on my computer and plug in information. Um, but I'll use like a shorthand if I'm in a hurry and, and I won't like write it full on out with all the detail, the way a, um, professional finished pattern needs to be. So it seems like over the years, um, the, the pattern crochet patterns are getting more and more detailed. Like years ago, you could just say, you know, double crochet, 15 double crochets per row until it reached 20 inches, you know, but now it's like, you know, double crochet in the third chain from the hook and in each chain across, chain two turn doesn't count as a double crochet, double crochet in each chain, in each double crochet all the way across, repeat row two for 14 rows, you know, it's just like, it's very, very detailed. And it didn't used to be that way. But um, consumers nowadays really need or want um, every little piece of information to make sure. I, I think in general, um, it just has to be appropriate for a wide range of skill levels. So people who are like extreme beginners need every little piece of detail. And then the more um, experienced people really don't need patterns that are that detailed. But um, I think a lot of people don't trust themselves to just figure it out. Like you guys are smart people. <laughs> you would figure it out if um, a lot of it is not like spelled out line by line. But what we do, um, just in case there's somebody who needs to learn one of the lessons that maybe they haven't learned yet. What is the most advanced item that I knitted or crocheted um, or knitted and crocheted? It, it depends on what you mean. Like I had one Bruges lace cowl that if you imagine a cowl, it's a tube and the tape of it went like up and around and like this and then back like this. And that was the motif. And so it did that like four times and then connected to itself to make a tube. So that was pretty, pretty intricate. So the actual stitching was super easy. It's just double crochets and chains, but like writing down like where to connect back um, was just a monster. Like, oh, you know, the 
12th row from the last row where I placed a marker. I mean, it was very, very hard to describe like how it would connect with each other. Um, then of course I've done crochet, um, sweaters and, and stuff that require an awful lot of attention. There was, um, one sweater that comes to mind right now that was in interweave crochet magazine years ago called the Larkspur sweater. So it was like a shell pattern, but it was, a like a wrap sweater. So like the one front covered the other front, like a ballerina. And then there was a tie around the waist and then there was shaping for the waist section. So like the back you worked, you know, and you decreased for the waist and then increased for the bust and shoulders. And then the front portions, you, you know, I had to do the same shaping, but then they had to, be, one had to be bigger than, or they both had to be bigger than half so that they would overlap. And then a tie was added. And then of course edging. So that was probably one of the most um, intricate uh, crochet patterns that was a garment that I've ever done. And then one more, um, the, the brocade. So if you go on redheart.com and search brocade, B R O C A D E blanket, that one was kind of a monster. So that is a pattern. It's a blanket, but it's like lots of tiny little motifs and they attach kind of as you go. And then it makes one really big motif. And then you repeat that for the size of the blanket. And that project um, is probably one of the most advanced blanket designs I have ever done. So, I mean, it's, e I mean, it's easy. You can do it. It's just, it's a lot of little pieces and it's a lot of time and you have to really just follow the pattern carefully, you know, and then the, um, the, what's it called? The one for Marley Bird that I just did with her chic sheep yarn. I think it's called the chic granny square blanket, <laughs> something like that. So also on redheart.com, it's on there. And it's the, I don't know, chic granny throw, maybe, I think. That one is also very advanced because it's the same technique that I used in the in describing the brocade, where it's like pieces added onto the side of a motif, and then the motif is then well, it's almost like its own little mosaic painting, each motif, and then you make a whole bunch of them and put them together. So it's totally doable. You absolutely can do it, and all the instructions are there. It's not physically difficult, but you just have to read the, the pattern very carefully and go step by step and take your time. It's not the kind of pattern that you can go on autopilot while you're watching law and order or something. <laughs> you know, you have to, you'll have to kind of pay attention to it and make sure you get it at least a few times before you like put it in your project bag and take it on the road. But I did it on the road. I absolutely crocheted that blanket while on vacation um, in the car on the way to wherever we were going that year. I forget where we went that year. Um, and so you totally can do it, but, but I was making it up. So I had it all in my head, but if you're like following the instructions, you need to make sure and allow for adequate attention to do it. All right. So if you can't figure it out, there are lots of people, oh, thank you, that are gracious enough to take time to clarify patterns. Absolutely. Although I will say that um, my time, I mean, I'm, I'm busy. So if it's my pattern, I absolutely will do my best to get back to you and answer questions. If it's not my pattern, I, I, will, I generally won't answer questions if it's not my pattern. Like I can't be in another designer's brain and figure out what they were trying to do. And so um, and I, I don't generally answer questions about other people's patterns. So you need to either find that designer or maybe go to um, a local guild meeting or a yarn store and see if they can decipher it from the pattern. Or, um, you know, we have lots of friends and neighbors who hopefully crochet. Hopefully you have a little circle of friends who, you know, crochet or understand um, some of the concepts and maybe they can help you see it differently. Now, the last trick to understanding a crochet pattern, I do have a couple videos up on my page on um, 
learning how to read crochet patterns. There might even be three. There might be three. And so one of the tricks, if you're if you're not understanding how to do a crochet pattern, is to write it, rewrite it, so that each phrase is on the next line. So every time you come to punctuation, every time you come to a comma, stop there and start the next next rest of the pattern on the next line until you reach another. Uh, I tell it lost the word punctuation, another punctuation mark. So stop at a colon, stop at a comma, stop at a semicolon, um, a stop at an asterisk and or like write it out longhand and just do each step, step by step, stopping at each punctuation mark until you figure it out. That helps a lot to see it kind of more linear, linearly <laughs> rather than a really long um, blob paragraph of instructions. Okay, so you've been getting hand paint off. That's annoying. Um, I do not, I have heard of the stress relief gloves. I have never used them. I know I see people wearing them sometimes. I luckily, knock on wood, have never had that kind of pain. I think it's um, pretty important to, um, I think it's pretty important to stop crocheting every half an hour or hour and like stretch and you know kind of inflect and relax your shoulders and stuff I think that's pretty important also um I admit that I also I also run and I did jazzercise for years and I think that your overall fitness supports whatever hobby that you're doing a lot of so I think because the rest of me is somewhat strong and fit, then it supports the fact that I sit and do this all the rest of the time. So make sure your whole self is as healthy as you can be. And then make sure you stop and take breaks and get up and stretch, Let's have some water, look around, <laughs> get your eyes off the computer screen a little bit, look off to the distance. Um, all of those things are important to staying healthy when you do the same repetitive motion over and over again. Let's see. Uh, let's see. How did I get my patterns on Red Heart's website? They bought them. They bought them. So I, I sold them to Red Heart and they put them up for, you know, after they paid for them. That's their method of um, selling yarn is by giving away free patterns, which is why you guys have heard this so many times from me already before, which is why um, I don't ever give away the pattern. I don't like tell you, here it is. You can just take it and go. No, I will direct you where to go to get the pattern um, because that's the whole point of a free pattern is to direct traffic back to the site, the blog, the website, the magazine, the whatever, whoever's sponsoring the pattern. So yeah, I'll give you links back to where you can find the pattern, but I will never like give you the instructions that someone else wrote because they're not mine to give. And even patterns that I wrote, if I sold them somewhere, then they they bought them for a reason and I no longer own them. So like my patterns on Red Heart, I'm not going to give out the written instructions as a PDF or even tell you word for word how to make it. But I will give you the link so that you can go download the PDF from their site and hopefully check out some yarn deals and specials while you're there. Let's see. I need to make a yoga for crocheters video. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really a yogini, a yogi, but yeah, absolutely stretching. I do have some friends who are physical therapists who, you know, talk about that. And I think that's best left up to the experts. Yeah, let's see. The ergonomic crochet hooks have helped with your hand issues while crocheting. I do really like also, I agree, the crochet hooks that have a thicker handle, whether it be the Edamo tulip hooks with the the black soft handle or the um, Amore hooks, I think they're called, or the Clovers with the, the thicker hook or the Susan Bates that have the wood around the aluminum hook. I really like those too. So like, yes, if it has a bigger grip on the hook rather than just the, the aluminum, then I think those are easier on the hands. Also, I have a set that's made out of like polymer clay handles with around an aluminum hook. And um, so yeah, all of the one, all of the hooks, I've even seen, oh, I, 
I bought it. <laughs> I bought it. There's, um, I don't even remember the company now. I bought it years ago. It's like, it, it looks like a darning egg. Like when you're like darning socks, does anybody do that anymore? But it looks like a darning egg. And then out of the top of the egg is a sawed off um, crochet hook. And you can like pull one out and put in a different size hook. And then you hold on to the egg to do the cro- to do the crocheting. And I just never could like get comfortable holding on to something that big to crochet. But I think that would be useful for some people, certainly. Let's see. You were in the World Trade Center. Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay. You were in the World Trade Center on 9-11. Oh, boy. Well, I'm glad you're okay with us. Emily, you bought those because the the hook brand you had picked came in colorful hook colors. Absolutely. Let's see. Uh, typing in your YouTube browser, yoga with Shira, yoga for knitters and crocheters, poses for carpal tunnel. Very good. Okay, Ophelia, thanks for that link. So if you guys are interested in that, try out yoga with Shira, S-H-I-R-A, yoga for knitters and crocheters. Awesome. Um, I actually do not play the piano. My daughter plays the piano. She's very good at it, but she's shy and doesn't like to play in front of people. And she is playing, um, I don't know, concert pieces right now. She's playing uh, Yurima, Y-U-R-I-M-A is probably her favorite composer. So she plays a lot of him and she's taking cello lessons right now too. So very, I'm not, I'm not uh, musically inclined. You just bought a set of the Susan Bates bamboo hooks and the added length of the bamboo makes it easier on the palm of your hand. I've heard that. You have small hands and the end of the hooks would stab me. Oh, that's interesting. I, I have heard other people say that though too. Um, oh, good point there, Emily. Thank you. Um, I'll keep an eye on that. Let's see. Uh, you still darn socks. Thanks for the info. You'll check out the yoga for crochet. Uh, loving your clover hooks, although they are almost not big enough for your monster hands, Brian, that's okay. So I don't, I'm trying to think of like what hooks would be most comfortable for you. Um, probably the Susan Bates are maybe, especially the ones with the wood handles might be the best size for you. But um, I don't know, you have to try some out, I guess. You, um, it, it's hard to get a wide variety of hook types um at some of the big box stores and then the local yarn stores like seem to cater more toward knitting than crochet in general so they may not have a huge selection of like laurel hill or furls or other crochet hook brands and the furls hooks while they are gorgeous are pretty pricey so um it's hard to justify the cost of one of those when you can go to the big box store and buy a hook for two bucks, you know, or three bucks. So it's hard. All right, everybody. I was going to close down at one, but I just got to talking. And so um, I am going to go get myself some lunch and get on with my day and hopefully uh, make some more videos for you later today that I can post the rest of the week. So again, uh, check out my Patreon and I'll put the link in the description below. And uh, the France trip is going strong. So join in if you're interested and uh, enjoy. Congratulations to Linda Kinsler. I'm sorry, Kinzer, no L in there. Linda Kinzer, K-I-N-Z-E-R. Thank you everyone so much for, um, for entering the giveaway. Please stay tuned for more videos. Please, the, uh, the people in the chat, if you could like this video, I'd appreciate it. And let's see, do, you, do I think the stigma of handmade in America is changing? You once, someone, you once told someone that you knit and she said, okay, grandma, I'm 39. Yeah. Yeah, we get that a lot. I still get that a lot where people are like, that's isn't that what old people do? I don't care. You know, whatever. You can call me old if you want. One day I will be old, but not now. Not yet. <laughs> uh, all right. Have a great day, everybody. Keep stitching, whether people make fun of you or not. <laughs> You're the one who's going to be warm at the end of the day with a blanket or a sweater or a hat. Then who's laughing, right? <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye.